I wanted to prove that I could do it. I'm a lifelong vegan and um, I'm a patron of the Vegan Society. It's their 70th anniversary next year and I was looking to do something really, really special. So um, I just thought, what's the most extreme thing I can do? I've done a lot of other marathons. I've done Marathon the Sable. That's really hot. So I thought this year, to celebrate <laughs> the heat last year, I'll go to the opposite extreme and do this. And um, I wanted to prove, as I say, I wanted to prove I could do it on a vegan diet and raise money because I run an animal sanctuary. Um, so help them as well. But I mean, you've, you, you've said you've done other extreme things. It's a mental focus, though, I think, that you must have that most people just don't have. It's the mental focus for the event, but also training for the event. Mm. Um, you've really got... This event is not about running quickly. It's about m being able to monitor your body and judge your body and judge everything that goes on in the race. And a little bit like an airline pilot, you're constantly checking the dials, checking that everything's working properly and one, working out what you're going to do if you get a problem and how you're going to solve it. What was the most difficult thing mm. you came across then? What was the toughest thing? Um, I think just the temperature and, and the, uh, the complications the temperature brought. I mean, one guy stopped for a toilet break, mm. and in the time it took him, his clothes froze to his body, and he was kind of in a, a frozen suit of armour. He couldn't actually get running again. Goodness me. You had yeah. to judge it perfectly, because I'd set off to kind of run it, and um, I knew that if I slowed, I would get hypothermia. A lot of people mm. got hypothermia. Just tell us a little bit about your knee, oh, because you, you lost your kneecap when you were 17. You had cancer in it, yeah, didn't you? And, mm. Well, I had a, a, a degenerative disease, right. which mm. actually ma made the, the whole thing crumble, right. which wasn't diagnosed for a couple of years. So I was um, basically, by the time it was, I was in a bit of a state, and so they took out the whole kneecap, and um, mm. it's very, very inflexible. And, and it, any, if I slip, I... Um, would dislocate it right, and that was right. obviously quite a big problem plus usually this marathon runs on um, a flat ground you mm. know flat cut yeah. ice there was uh, half of the course was um, I was literally up to my waist in snow Goodness trying to wow. tackle my way through that so it was extremely extremely and you, tough and you did it in four hours 53 minutes which many people yeah. Who, who run a you know, London yeah. Marathon, Brighton Marathon today, yeah. for example, yeah. would, would say is a, is a pretty creditable time. Um, yeah, I mean, it is. I mean, taking into consideration the fact that, you know, you cannot carry anything with you in the race. I had a couple of boiled sweets in my pocket. When I went to get them, they just crumbled. Um, oh, everything had to be taken in a warm tent. You had to keep stopping and going into the tent. Um, you couldn't carry, if you carried fluid, obviously, it'd freeze immediately. Yeah. Um, so the, the breaks that you had to take were taking five, six minutes to walk back to the warm tent, to carefully walk back, because the camp base was very slippery. Um, go and change face masks. I mean, some of the face masks I wore just froze to my face. Um, so, you know, it was a real challenge.